Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here. Meeting my icon, Catherine is about. Another week, another episode. Wait, what is your Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you a different kind of video. This is going to be the start of a somewhat reoccurring series on my channel now, and these are going to be my QMRs, my quick movie reviews. And honestly, this is inspired by a recent, uh, I guess, QMR that Chris Stockman did. Um, probably my favorite YouTuber, my favorite movie reviewer. Uh, I'm sure they've done, been done before that as well, but it sort of just sparked my own... Uh, Urge to do some some of my reviews this way. Um, now that my reviews aren't as high demand as his at all, <laughs> um, but you know my channel revolves mostly around TV reviews, but I also do uh, movie reviews when I watch them. Um, but sometimes you know I work a full time job, so even though I watch films, I don't always necessarily get around to doing a full single video on each of them. I try to. I'm still going to. Most of the time, I'll still see individual movie reviews. But sometimes it's just, uh, I need some space, you know, I need to relax a little bit and I have to worry about uploads. Um, so this, this is when these kinds of videos are going to come in. Um, it'll be, I'm thinking maybe three to five movies at a time when I do these videos. Um, not entirely sure, we'll see how it works. Um, but this doesn't mean I'm discrediting these movies or anything necessarily. Um, it's more so just ones I sort of just got caught up in life with and then I just didn't have time to do a review on them but I still wanted to get my thoughts out there to some extent. So that's what these are for. And now this first one, uh, this first quick movie review is going to be discussing Sabotage which came out in 2014 as well as Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse 2015, Daddy's Home as well from 2015 and Daddy's Home 2 from last year. Now, Sabotage, like I said, came out in 2014, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, as well as Sam Worthington, Muriel Enos, as well as Olivia Williams, Terrence Howard, Joe Bagnelio, and others. And, of course, this movie revolves around John Breacher Wharton, who leads an elite DAA task force. Its latest mission is a high-stakes raid on a safe house owned by one of the world's deadliest drug cartels. Warren and his team complete the mission successfully, but secretly steal $100 million for themselves. They think their work is done until one by one the commandos are mysteriously killed. As the body count rises, everyone becomes a suspect. So yeah, I actually watched this movie some time ago, and... I meant to talk about it. I, I did want to talk about it, don't get me wrong. Um, but again, you know, just to go back to my explanation at the beginning of the video. And I am a big Arnold Schwarzenegger fan. He's probably my favorite classic action hero, if I were to name one. He always has been. And he's one of my favorite actors of all time overall in general. Um, you know, there's something great, you know, kind of nostalgic about his 80s and 90s style of movies. Um, and over the past few years, I think he's actually refined himself a lot more as an actor, similar to Sylvester Stallone in the Creed movies. He's done some more refined work like, uh, you know, Aftermath, Maggie, things like that. Um, and this is another example of it. Uh, it's definitely uh, similar to a movie that came out a year after uh, called Sicario. You know, it's kind of, again, a, you know, kind of the corrupt cartel, kind of gritty you know, kind of more grounded, but also pretty violent type of film. Uh, these have been going around a lot over the years, actually, so it's 
kind of common like Den of Thieves this, this year, which I haven't watched. Seems like a similar type of thing. Um, and I like this one. It's not my favorite Schwarzenegger film. Yeah, that's, that's just too many to count, really. Um, but I think it's pretty solid. You know, I, I think I definitely need to rewatch it. I think it could get better after that. Um, but Schwarzenegger, he gives a definitely a commanding performance. He has a good presence. Um, the whole team has a decent uh, chemistry with each other before things start going awry. Um, and the ending, it's uh, you know very, very violent. Not many characters survive. And uh, the final scene, I actually like quite a bit myself. That's the scene I actually remember the most, besides a particular uh, car chase near the end of the film. But I think everyone here gives pretty good performances. I think the highlights, obviously, being Schwarzenegger and probably... <coughs> excuse me. Probably, um... Sorry, I just lost her name all of a sudden, which is great. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, she is, uh, you know, she starred in The Killing, of course, which I need to watch as well. But yeah, Marielle uh, Enos, I thought she did a really nice job as well. She's one of the more eccentric members of the team, and I thought she is quite good. Next up, we have Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, which came out in 2015. And starred Ty Sheridan, Logan Miller, Joey Morgan, Sarah DeMont... David uh, Cockner, and obviously others I could name the whole cast list if I wanted to. Um, but what could possibly go wrong when three buddies decide to join the Boy Scouts? When bloodthirsty undead ghouls invade their once peaceful town, it's up to kind hearted Ben, quick witted Carter, and class clown Augie to save the day. With help from Denise, a beautiful but tough cocktail waitress, Boys must put their scouting skills to the ultimate test to save mankind and earn their zombie killing badges. So yeah, I just watched this movie uh, probably uh, early this week. Um, and it's one I've been uh, fairly interested in seeing for a while. I remember in 2015 when it came out, uh, my girlfriend and I were actually sort of half planning on uh, going to see it at a local theater one of the days we were together. And we just ended up not doing it for whatever the reason, but it's always been one I've been curious to see because, of course, I love horror and uh, yeah, I enjoy a good uh, horror zombie comedy as much as the next guy. Zombie Land is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, and of course, I quite like Shaun of the Dead as well. This movie isn't quite on the level of either of those. I don't think it quite uh, cemented itself in your mind as much as those two. Um, but at the same time, it's perfectly enjoyable, you know? It has some good com camaraderie between the friends here. Um, I think Sarah Dumont is quite good as sort of our tough, you know, uh, chick that sort of uh, takes the reins and everything. I thought she's quite likable as well. Um, I don't know, there's just not, there's just something missing. Maybe it's been done a little bit too much by now, or I I'm not sure. Um... But there's no like overly remarkable scene to me, I guess. It's just fine. Um, and I don't want to sound too critical because I enjoyed myself. I watched it uh, using FX on demand, so it had a couple commercials, but luckily they were quick. Um, yeah, I, I won't mind seeing more, even though I doubt that's going to happen at this point. I certainly don't think it's bad. It's just not one of those all-time great, you know, comedy horror films, I, I don't think. But it's definitely not bad. There's definitely far worse out there, and I think it, uh, I think it deserves a spot if you enjoy the kind of film it is in your collection. And next up, we have both Daddy's Home and Daddy's Home 2. I just watched both of these over the past week, you know, kind of for the holiday season. Um, my, uh, you know, uh, at our house we own the first one. I ha hadn't uh, quite seen the second one yet, which I watched uh, on Amazon Prime. It's also on um, Hulu, I think, too. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I, d I just put this picture up because it shows both the films. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm a, I'm a fairly big Will Ferrell fan. I used to like him even more when I was younger. Sometimes lately I find myself not quite being into his style of comedy as much as I was years ago. But I still like him. He's definitely one of my favorite comedic actors. Um, you know, of course, uh, Step Brothers being one of my favorite comedy movies ever. Um, so I always have a fondness for him, for sure. Um, and uh, I like both these movies. They're kind of good to watch back-to-back, uh, -back, I think. Uh, yeah, it puts you in a good mood. I just like to... I was just in the mood for this kind of movie, really. Um, on both ends. 
Uh, now, of course, the second one. <clears throat> the first one sort of has a classic setup, of course. You know, uh, Will Ferrell plays Brad. He's this new stepdad. Um, he's been with his wife for a little while, taking care of the kids. They're finally starting to get used to him. You know, when Mark Wahlberg's character, Dusty, shows up, the ex-husband. Um, and he's all cool, you know, badass, muscular, everything. He just cuts down and embarrass, <laughs> embarrasses Will Ferrell left and right. And so Will Ferrell becomes paranoid and sort of uh, insecure about his marriage and, uh, you know, standing with the, with the kids. And, uh, you know, it's basically the point there. And then Daddy's home, too. Yeah, Dusty and uh, Brad have more of an understanding with each other. But here comes Mel Gibson as Dusty's father and John Lithgow as Will Ferrell's. And, you know, so, so we sort of get more of a dynamic cast in that one, I will say. However, I do think I like the first Daddy's Home just a bit more. I'm not sure why exactly. I mean, there's not a lot wrong with the second one in comparison to the first. But, I don't know, I just like something about the initial premise of the first. I enjoy a little bit more just sort of focused on, uh, you know, Mark Wahlberg upstaging and embarrassing Will Ferrell. And, uh, yeah, sure, you get John Cena a little bit more in, uh, in Daddy's Home, too. Um, but I just, it just felt a little less focused, not quite as much uh, banter. And, well, I, I guess I shouldn't say that, because they have the fathers there, and they have that dynamic going, you know, unresolved issues between Mark Wahlberg and Gibson, who work pretty well as father and son. Um, I guess just not quite as much between Wahlberg and... Feral is as memorable to me as the first one, but still perfectly fine. You know, like I said, they're definitely really enjoyable to watch together. And I recommend Sigma if you're a fan of Feral or you've been enjoying the uh, sort of comedic roles that uh, Wahlberg's been doing lately. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this first uh, QMR of mine. Uh, I know it might, see, might seem like a random combination, but these are just movies I watch, uh, whether they're old, new, a few years ago, whatever. And it saves me time, and I actually already enjoy doing it this way, so you'll probably see this style at least periodically. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this one. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.